TGR News, broadcasting from the State of Israel. Welcome back to TGR News. Hello. Uh, well, we had another week of passing out food. This week, uh, we, we added uh, more families to the list. Uh, so we're steadily growing, thanks to you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, you know when we take on a family, we uh, we don't we don't we don't forget about them. We keep we keep every week every family every time we add a family that means every week they get food from us from the donations you guys are giving to help these people here in Israel. So God bless you and and God said He would. God said He bless those that bless Israel and curse those that curse Israel. So yeah. all you guys giving these donations, the blessings are coming to you too. I'm sure. Thank you. God so promise. Much. Yeah. Uh, the uh the uh it's always fun to uh the, the fun part is giving them the food yeah you know it really is it really is a, it really is a blessing to be able to give it to them and hand it out to them and everything and when we go shopping together and pick them up the food yeah. another thing is, is we usually try to uh, make sure and buy all israeli products so so that the donations you give is is a double blessing not only you're blessing the people who are in really bad shape and really need the food but they, uh, but you're also supporting Israeli businesses because almost everything we buy, I think there's only one product in the whole box that's not Israeli made. Yeah. So it's all you're supporting Israel, Israel's uh, companies as well. So, so it's, it's a, double. it's, a, it's a double whammy. It's a double blessing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Man. Yeah, it really is. So it really is a blessing. Well, you know, this week we, uh, you saw I was in the army again. I. And I made a I made a, a point to, to say that anyone who's joined us recently on this channel, uh, this really isn't an IDF uh, channel. Yeah. <laughs> this, I usually go around taking uh, wonderful videos. Well, hopefully, I, I, wonderful yes, places you do. Yes. of uh, places in Israel that are usually connected to the Bible or something, and show people Israel as well as this uh, TGR News uh, every week update. So it's uh, so it's been different this past uh, few weeks. Yeah. This past couple months almost. So uh, Israel's like I said in the last video, Israel really is uh, getting ready for something big. Uh, just last night, actually, a soldier was killed in uh, in in, um, in a training exercise. Actually, no names or nothing out yet. We don't want to we don't yeah. want to step on any toes there. But uh, mm. yeah, the IDF really is uh, ramping up everything right now. Yeah. Uh, well, as usual, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, let's start. Let's get started. <laughs> New corona cases a day in Israel is on raise. We started this week with 16,000 new cases a day, and now we are at 50,000 cases every day. That is the same as 2 million a day in America. For yeah, example. but forget if you take the population differences. Yeah, yep. yeah, because we're small. If we stay on that rate, then every Israeli in the country will have had corona in a few months. Yes. And when we say a few months, we talk about what, five, six months? Yeah, five, six months. And also now they have, I heard them say that they're, they're, they're planning for 300,000 cases a day. A, day. a day. If that happens, then we, we, the whole country that had corona, we should be over this thing in, the, in a couple months. Yeah. 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 Um, all the people I know that have Corona now, or they quarantine or have Corona, yeah. the country is empty. Yeah, you're going on the, you know, going on the roads, and it just it's, it's, it's roads empty. Are, everything's it's empty. empty. Yeah. The Ministry of Health here in Israel says that they can handle the widespread <clears throat> of Omicron Corona. Uh, they flat out said it's not a big deal. We can handle it. Uh, so the country does not need to go into so many restrictions and cause such damage to the economy. Only two or three out of a thousand sick people actually uh, become seriously ill and you know not necessarily die but just seriously ill you know so i mean that's a i mean I th that now i think we're talking about something that's less than uh, the common cold yeah. you know it's less deadly than the common cold i mean so yeah. why why are people why are we still having all these restrictions and green passports and yeah. and all this stuff i don't i can't understand that well, they say the Delta is still here, the yeah. other, uh, and it's still growing a little bit, but it looks like the Omicron, the new kind, taking over, so it's, yeah. it's good news, I think. Yeah, it sounds like, sounds like it's good news, <laughs> if the government would start acting right. Yeah. <laughs> the, ministry, uh, the Minister of Finance, uh, Victor Lieberman, 
um, said that in 2021 was one of Israel's best years for the economy. He used a restaurant as an example that he went to. He said it was full. He said it was absolutely full. Actually, what he said it was so packed that sardines in a can would feel more room than they, they would feel more comfortable than he did in that restaurant because it was so full. A journalist from uh, the one of the news networks here in Israel said, "Well, let's go check that place out because they knew where he went." And uh, I think that it was it was a uh, rest, pretty good good sized restaurant with a lot of tables, and there was only two tables there that had people Taking, on them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so that was just a flat out lie. Yeah. Yeah. You just you just lying. Yeah. He, oh. he, he because he doesn't want to give out any payouts. Of course. That's why. Yeah. So he's saying all this stuff. You know, it's just insane. He's just a liar. I, mean, I call you, Victor Lieberman, a liar. He lies on so many things. Yeah. Uh, he just. Well, 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 well he, he might call you back. Be careful. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if you see this, <laughs> I'm calling you a liar. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Businesses are closing because of the government decisions, but because there is no lockdown, they will not give payouts. That's exactly what we yeah, talked that's about. That's exactly what we're talking about, yeah. It's like. Uh, Quarantine without quarantine. It's like, uh, you know, close down, but really they don't say we close you down, but nobody really going to these businesses right. all in food. Absolutely. And- Absolutely. Because uh, on one hand, uh, the prime minister, Naftali Bennett, is, is causing panic, telling everyone not to go outside. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do it. And so many people listen to that stuff, you yeah. know. And, uh, and then uh, on the second hand, the businesses are saying you're, you're, you're not closing down, but you're telling everyone to stay home. So it's... It's and the also, same thing. And also many people are staying home because they quarantine. Yeah. Also, they can't go yeah. or they sick or they have some, met somebody who's sick or the kids from the school, one of their classmates, or, you know, had yeah. corona. So had the, the whole class have to stay. And of course, the parents have to stay with the kids. So it's like... Um, <laughs> uh, Yair Lapid got sick, uh, our, our upcoming, you know, the, 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 the deal they made uh, half term as... Uh, Ben, as Naftali Bennett, the other half is Yair Lapid. So pretty soon Yair Lapid will be our, our next prime minister. Yeah. He got sick with Omicron, and it's amazing how right after that, the quarantine times went down. <laughs> you know, every time one of the government officials gets sick, then it seems like we our restrictions get less and less. Yeah. Maybe that's what we. Maybe that's that's the plan. Maybe just make sure all the government officials get get uh, this uh, Corona. And then, and then we'll have. Then they'll make. Then they'll make more sen- uh, sensible uh, rules and restrictions, and or no restrictions. Yeah. Well, in the north of the country, in the middle of the day, a four-year-old child playing in his neighborhood playground uh, was shot and killed. He was shot in the neck by a stray bullet from yet another shooting between Arab criminal elements. Now, this uh, it's really. I mean, it's the middle of the day. You know, you you you're with your four-year-old child at the playground. Playing, he's on the monkey bars or on the seesaw or something, yeah. and then boom! They right. had this uh, very very sad video, the last video of the of this boy that playing in the, in some of the one of this. Um, yeah, one of the toys to- on the yeah, playground. Yeah. yeah, and just few second, um, I think a few minutes after that, he was dead. Just yeah, this is so sad. Yeah, so sad. well, it's out of control. It really is. Where Israel needs to ramp up. Well, <laughs> I've told, I've said it before. You know, the police really don't do their job here. They just don't do their job. And I'm not sure it's 100% their fault. Because on one hand, you got the people yelling at the, the police, go do your job. But at the other hand, you got all these news networks and the government videotaping everything they do and putting them in court if they, you know, a little bit of excess uh, uh, force here or there. Yeah. Or, yeah. So you can't tie them, their hands and then tell them, go do your job with their hands tied. It's, it just doesn't work that way. You, you can't do that. Yeah, well, I see a difference in, the late, in lately. The Arabs, in the beginning, I remember a few years ago, they was keeping everything inside. If something like that will happen, they'll say, we'll handle it between us. They didn't really uh, try to get to seek help from uh, Israeli government too yeah. much. Now it looks like they understand they cannot handle it by themselves, and they really, they, they're hoping somebody will just, Police, Israeli police will help them. Yeah. They're really praying for somebody to help them. Yeah, and uh, I hope they do. Yeah. Well, I give you a, a, a an idea of the coalition that uh, that uh, our Prime Minister Naftali Bennett uh, put together here in this country. Yair Golan, he's a Knesset member from Bennett's 
coalition uh, in an interview called The Jews That Live in the Settlements Less Than Human. Yes. This is a, this is a man in our coalition, in our government, right? Um, after, after being asked afterwards if he thinks he maybe he, uh, he wasn't understood, he said he meant every word. You know, they, they even gave him a chance. Maybe, maybe you messed up. Maybe yeah, that's not what yeah. you meant. He said, no, no, that's what I meant. How? My goodness. But don't forget, this is right after uh, our Prime Minister Bennett gave electricity to the illegal Arab villages and disconnected electricity from the Jewish homes in Judea and Samaria. Yeah, exactly. I mean... If you don't know what's going on here in Israel, just look at that that one little article right there, that one little piece right there. That'll tell you the whole part, the whole the whole picture of uh, of Naftali Bennett, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, and his, and the coalition that he's put together. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, it's it's crazy. I can't believe this is our government. I don't know what's going on. I'm uh. telling you, Joel. Yeah. Prime Minister Bennett again uses position to attack former Prime Minister Netanyahu. Now that Bennett sees how far he has fallen in the eyes of the public here, his reaction is to attack Netanyahu. These, these are actions of a small, small man. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's uh, you know, when, you're, when, you, when, when you feel like you're being backed into the corner and the only thing you can do is attack, attack someone's, you know, yeah. you know, morally or whatever, it's, uh, it's, it just shows. It just shows goes to show kind of what kind of character he is. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, outside of Israel, Kazakhstan is in the beginning of a civil war. Oh, yeah. Kazakhstan is 72% Muslim, but has not been a player with the other Muslim countries against Israel. Right. Yet. Not yet, yeah. <laughs> now, after the fallout of this civil war, hopefully that won't change. We hope. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. We'll just have to wait and, and see. see. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The uh, Well, Kazakhstan... I, has, really never has been a problem for us. Is it actually usually on oh, our side? Very pro Israel, Israel, even though they're seventy two percent Muslim, as you as you mentioned. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> but you know, we'll ne you never know what's going to happen after this. But yeah, I guess the only reason we really mentioned that on this on the channel is because uh, it does affect this part of the country, uh, this part of the the world, and uh, and everything that happens around here in it, in this part of the world hap is affects everywhere else in the world. Exactly. You know, it's like a domino effect. Yeah. A 19-year-old Israeli soldier was seriously injured by a terrorist that saw him on the side of the road on Tuesday night and ran him over. The terrorist was caught and will stand trial. Uh, this is, uh, it's, you know, it's more and more they're using their cars to run over people. And so this 19-year-old soldier was out doing his job, right? I think it was a um, check post. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and this uh, Arab just decided to run him over. And uh, he's got he's he's in the hospital. He's hopefully he'll uh, yeah, pray yeah. for that. Yeah, pray for that. Absolutely. Well, on the same day, a few Arabs ran a young Jewish man off the road, opened his car door, and beat him in the face with a ten-pound hammer, sledgehammer. I mean, they just ran. You know, they, he, the guy was driving his car, and then they uh, the Arabs come with their car and pulled him over to make him pull over. Came out, got out, opened his door, and hit him in the face. With a ten-pound sledgehammer. My goodness, this yeah. is this uh, is what's reported. You know, it's interesting. I don't know if you know, but many cases similar to that, throwing big rocks and hurting, injured. You know, people injured in their faces. Yep. I saw a woman with her jaw just out, like it's, and they don't report every single yeah, case. They don't. They, most of them are not reported. Most of them aren't. Yeah. Yeah, well, we talked about the buses, the bus, the bus drivers, about how difficult it is for them to to do their job. They don't feel like they can come. There's a good chance they don't come home alive at the end of the shift because of all of the rocks and everything when they, the Arabs are throwing at them and everything. The um, yeah, and they, just because we we're not talking about every bus driver and everything, we, they, just like here, it's not reported everything. We can't if this if we reported everything, that's what this channel would all thing would do. <laughs> We'd just be sitting here talking about yeah. all these. Yeah, and every video is gonna be like I don't know, a few many hours. <laughs> yeah, just talking about what happened this yeah. last couple of days of you know these last of attacks. Yeah, this yeah. week, just like every year, Israel plants trees all over the country. This time in the Negev, the Arabs are protesting it and telling the Jews to leave their leave their land alone, their land yeah, yeah. alone. And 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 they're protesting is <clears throat> it's not a peaceful protest. No, 
burning tires, burning, lighting entire vehicles on fire in, uh, in big uh, major roads. And, you know, just like they always do. Well, tell me one time they were peaceful uh, protesting against yeah. something, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, uh, well, well, during that same time when uh, all this protesting was going on because of, uh, because of uh, the, the Israelis planting the trees like they do every year. It's nothing new, you know, in the desert. You know, one of God's promises is how he would turn the, the desert of Israel fertile, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we just we enjoy that blessing until today. And the Israelis take advantage of that. Every year we do it. So Ram, the, the Arab party of in the coalition, Ram is uh, Mansour Abbas is the head of that coalition, uh, uh, head of that party in our coalition yeah. that that um, that Naftali Bennett. Actually, just a recap, Naftali Bennett, when he wanted, when he tried to make, when he made the coalition, he had to sign over telling, giving rights to uh, Ram to uh, be able to build freely Arab villages in the Negev. Negev. That's, if you remember, that's what we called when we said how he just gave the Negev to the, to the, to the Arabs, right? Well, uh, didn't, uh, well, Ram and the Arab party in the coalition didn't show for a vote in the Knesset during this time, so during this time that uh, they were planting trees. So Prime Minister Bennett stopped the tree planting to get them to come. Yet again, Prime Minister Bennett, uh, he just bent over backwards with no backbone to uh, make sure, just because he needed them to vote on this, on this, uh, this law and, um, and on this process because it, to keep everything going, right? Yeah. Which just, it just shows you how, it just shows you exactly who this, who, who this person yeah. really is. Yeah, exactly. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Yair Lapid, which, by the way, is the next prime minister like we just talked about, met with this week with a high-ranking official from the Palestinian Authority. This makes the fourth meeting between the coalition and the Palestinians in, in the last uh, couple weeks. The, uh, and we don't know anything about what they're talking about or, or anything. The, uh, it's, uh, you know, it really is... Uh, who knows what they're talking about? But they're doing a lot of meetings. And this, this high-ranking official that they met with, uh, that Yair Lapid met with, if, if I can remember right and understood it correctly, is uh, something to do with the uh, Palestinian Intelligence Authority, whatever that means. Yeah. Iran was caught trying to convert Israelis to be spies for them by offering them a large amount of money to give them information about, uh, if I remember right, they send them to all kinds of videos, things. videos of, of uh, government uh, of buildings. Uh, they and they're trying to get them to uh, to follow certain government officials and try to learn their schedules yeah. and stuff like that. And something to be alert about, they send them to take a picture of of American embassy in Israel. Yeah, the American embassy <laughs> in Israel. That's one of the things. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah hundred percent yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah, Iran is. Uh, yeah, well, it's no big surprise that Iran's trying everything it can, but it was uh, it was really great that the uh, Israeli intelligence got a hold of got it, it real yeah. quick. Yeah, it wasn't something that was going on for a long time or anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, Israel's getting ready for an attack to di to directly take out Iran's nuclear advances. Um, you know, we just talked about that in this video, this past video I made while I was in the army. Uh, we know that Hezbollah has 150,000 rockets and missiles, and as soon as we make our move on Iran, they will most likely start firing their rockets. But this is not going to stop us from doing what has to of be done. Not. They have 150. They do have 150,000 rockets, but that doesn't mean that they can push the button and send 150,000 rockets. Yeah. It all depends on how many rocket launchers they have, and it takes time between between uh, reloads and everything else. So, and we know about that. So the main thing, the main targets. It's not really the rockets. It's the rocket launchers, to be honest. Yeah. You, know? you take out 10 rocket launchers and they're crippled, right? They're, they're, yeah, the rocket's not so, working. So we, we'll be able to take care of it. But what we need is we need the world to stay out of our business or join us. Now that's, yeah. That's what oh, we need. You're very optimistic. <laughs> yeah, and, but, and neither one of those two is going to happen. I, yes. do, I do realize that. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, you got anything you want to say? Uh, that was a wonderful week, except the news. Uh, the weather here was cold, and I'm love, I, I really love this. Finally, we have this cold coming to Israel. We even had rain, which is a blessing. Absolutely. And probably we'll have today, too. Yeah, later on but today. Tomorrow, yeah, today. So, um, yeah, I think, um, except this news and corona going crazy in Israel, um, I'm happy Pretty you're back, and I'm right. happy you're safe. Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm back, too. <laughs> Be able to get videos out for the people. Yes. Okay, well, 
We thank you very much for all your support. And if you uh, want to help us out uh, with the people here in Israel, don't forget to join us on the goldenreport.com. Until next week, God bless. Bye-bye.